Welcome, friends and collectors, to this all-new edition of Diecast Emporium. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two vintage 1990s models of the Caterpillar 416 backhoe loader with hydraulic hammer. This version I purchased from DHS Diecast, and this version I purchased off eBay. And we're all going to learn a very, very, very valuable lesson today throughout the duration, so be sure to stay tuned. The packaging design for both of mine is identical, with the exception of somebody's explosive diarrhea after Chipotle on this one. And this one, of course, is in much better condition with just a piece of yellow tape and a white sticker with a code on the side, which I assume meant something to somebody at one point. And on the bottom, we can see that these models were made by NZG, distributed by Norscott. As I said before, this is a standard 416. This is a 416B. So we will start off with the first one. So NZG, if you're not familiar, offered the 416 backhoe in many different configurations. Open rops, closed cab, standard bucket on the back, and this version, which is a hydraulic impact hammer. Let's take it out. It was so new and well-kept, in fact, that it still has the original NZG tag. Let's put that back away for now. All right. Now, let's unbox this version. We'll call this the ED version. Not erectile dysfunction, yeah, animals. For explosive diarrhea version of the 416. Okay. Everything besides the outer packaging looks good so far. All right. Still looking relatively good. This version has the enclosed cab. But as soon as I do this, you immediately can tell that uh, we are missing a piece. Yeah. And the seller on eBay conveniently did not angle any of his product photos to show the front grill. As of the time that I am filming this video, this is up for dispute on eBay, as the seller did not want to offer a reasonable resolution despite my best efforts. But because I still have some class, I'm not going to publicly mention his user name. All right, let's take a break. Let's get this packaging and this what is likely to be literal crap off the table. And when we come back, we'll take a look at both of these models up close and personal. Let's get this piece of junk out of the way first, which in sequential order, obviously, is the second version of the 416 backhoe, the B for Bravo version. As I mentioned before, it has the enclosed cab, which is kind of nice, but for a backhoe loader, enclosed cabs never really did much for me because in order to accurately replicate realistic backhoe poses, unless you're using it only for the front loader part, you can't swivel the seat back to use the backhoe part. Other details, this of course is the Cat Redline era, or the Pyramid era, call it what you will. The tires are rubber, and because they've been sitting in styrofoam for likely the better part of its entire life, there are bits of small styrofoam that are on the rubber tires. Uh, that's a reaction that often happens, not a big deal, you can get that off with relative ease. Other than it missing the engine cover, the model is in okay condition, with just a few slight paint chips here and there. For functionality, since it's a rubber tire backhoe, it moves on its rubber wheels. There is no steering, but there is a slight bit of oscillation on the front axle, but it's almost slim to none. For bucket functionality and loader arm functionality, well, they go up really, really high, which is something I have always appreciated with NZG Caterpillar backhoes, whether they be 416s, whether they be 436. Uh, or even the 428s, which are the side shift European style cat backhoes. Dumping forward, the bucket also dumps to a good angle. So, we're in the green so far, except for this. Now, let's go down to the other end. For added support, oftentimes you will see backhoes posed like this, with its front bucket acting as a front stabilizer. Let's lower the stabilizer legs properly at the rear. Again, very stiff. And they do not want to come down on this model at all. Literally at all. So I am not going to force them. You can see here, as I'm trying to move them, the cylinder jack is almost breaking in half. So, they are supposed to come down fully, but obviously they are not. Here's the back portion. 
It is a center pivot backhoe, meaning that it pivots in the center. Pretty self-explanatory. And the biggest selling point for this version is that it does have the hydraulic impact hammer. Although there's no name or branding on it, I believe it is a Balderson impact hammer. That is the 416B. We'll pause momentarily and come back with the better of these two, the standard 416 with hammer. I always like to end things on a high, so let's check out the standard 416's functionality. Here's the front end. Again, works excellent. By the way, there's the cover that uh, I need for the other one. Quick difference. All right. Now this one, the stabilizer legs do work. And again, they only go down to about here, which is a little bit shallow. They probably could go down a little bit more uh, if I wanted to be really aggressive and force this. But it is enough to hold the machine off the ground just barely. And now we can see the hammering functionality as well. You can move it up to here if you want to do some hammering on a wall or bring it down vertically to do some work on a street, for example, if you're using this on a road construction diorama. So there you go, friends and collectors. That's my review of both the 416B with an enclosed cab and the OG, the original 416 with ROPS, but both have a hydraulic impact hammer. Again, bearing in mind these models are from the late 80s into the early 90s, the functionality is incredible. I would argue that it's right up there with some of today's backhoes from various model manufacturers, if not better, due to the lift height, which is actually high enough to get over the side of an American-style dump truck, as well as the dump angle, which discharges completely. Finally, it's nice to have a backhoe with a hammer on the back. You can tell everybody who's Jack and what they need to do. So it's nice that I have both of these in the collection. I just wish that this had been handled in a more uh, mature fashion. But again, as of the filming of this video, this is now in eBay's hands. I will update you as to what happens in the comments section. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Take care, be well, be sure to like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe to us here as we've got a lot of great content coming. Almost videos daily at this point. I'm so behind. So whether you're into construction equipment, whether you're into trucks, whether you're into HOF scale models, whether you're into military models, and I'm even going to be doing a segment on N scale models here very, very shortly, there's a little bit of something for everybody if you are into the die cast scale model hobby. Again, until next time, take care, be well. Click on the video links that are on your screen right now as they are similar videos to this one. So if you enjoyed my rambling on this one, chances are you're going to enjoy my rambling on those. All right, guys, take care, be safe. I'll see you in the next review.